Thank you, Teresa, Jenny, and Patty. Good morning. Thank you for coming on this first day of spring. Welcome to Aldersgate United Methodist Church. I have a few uh, quick announcements. Immediately after the church service, right here in the sanctuary, there will be a brief church council meeting. So all members of church council, uh, please stay put for that uh, brief meeting. There'll be plenty of coffee and, and uh, cookies afterwards after the meeting in the fellowship hall. Um, on the white table in the hallway is an Easter flower order form. If you're interested in ordering Easter lilies or hyacinths or tulips for Easter Sunday, April 17th, uh, please uh, grab one of those forms on the uh, white table in the narthex hallway. And uh, you have two weeks till April 3rd to uh, get those orders into the church office. So uh, please, by all means, help us celebrate Easter with a lovely floral arrangement. Those order forms, once again, on the white table in the narthex hallway. We'd let, if you were with us last week, we were graced to have uh, Reverend Mario Meyer in our pulpit. And Reverend Mayer is back in our pulpit today by popular demand. <laughs> he actually told the story uh, because of his uh, Chilean South, African, or South American accent. He was telling us that uh, last week, uh, one of the uh, congregants at his first church in Southern Illinois said, it was about a year before we were able to understand you. So we're, we got two weeks, so we're gonna do a crash course. Now we'll be able to understand him this week. But uh, yeah, Reverend Mayer uh, is filling in for another pastor that Jenny had lined up, but uh, uh, that pastor had recently undergone some surgery and hadn't recovered well enough to join us. So we thank you, Reverend, for uh, pinch hitting on, on short notice. That's it for the announcements. Now I'd ask you all to please rise if you're comfortable to do so and join in our first hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, verses 1, 2, and 4. standing for our call to worship. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. We will wait on you, Lord. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. We will wait on you, Lord. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. We will wait on you, Lord. The Lord is my portion. 
Therefore, I will wait for him. We will wait and worship you, Lord. Now you may be seated. Please join in our prayer of confession. O oh God of every blessing, you invite us into a life of deeper meaning and purpose, a life of loving goodness and faithfulness. We hear your invitation, but are often distracted by other invitations, invitations to things that don't satisfy, things that waste our energy and our purpose. O oh God, renew your call within us, your call to all who hunger and thirst for the ultimate value in their lives, your call to all who yearn for your powerful presence in their lives. Be merciful to us, forgive our sins, and give us new resolve to answer your invitation. Amen. The prophet Isaiah tells us that we need only return to the Lord our God, for God is merciful and forgives our sins. Your love means more than life to us, O oh God. We praise you. Now, if there are any joys and concerns you'd like to share with our church family here this Sunday morning, uh, please uh, stand where you are or raise a hand, and Mary Lou will bring a microphone to you to share with the congregation. Do we have any joys and concerns? We have Mike in the back. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so prayers for a good family, family friend of Teresa and I, Monica. Her father, Tom, affectionately known as Tom the Bomb, has uh, passed away after a very short battle with, uh, with the terminal disease. So please pray for Tom. Thank you. Alice, good to see you again, Alice. Hi, uh, and I'm glad to be back. <laughs> um, my, my prayer is both joy and concern. Uh, it's a joy to be back here. It's a concern. I have a niece who has written a book uh, called The Blue Cord, if you notice on my cart. I have a blue cord. And it has to do with she and her husband's ministry on uh, inviting peace, people of peace to Christ. And I would be happy to, I'm out of books at the moment, but I'd be happy to order more books if any of you would be interested in reading. I know I passed around her husband's book a year or two ago, and um, I just think that I've talked more about Jesus having read this book than any time ever in my life and I would invite you to join me in that ministry. Thank you, Alice. Are there any others? Pastor Mayor. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our dear Father, wonderful God, we know that we, when we are coming before you, we are before the Creator, the Sustainer, the one that is always willing and able to listen and to help us as we ask this morning for all these joys and concerns. <clears throat> you are ready to forgive us and make us new. And it's so wonderful to know that we have a father such the one that you are. For this reason, this morning, we want to pray for those who are celebrating and those who are suffering. We don't want to hear people, family members, our relatives, our friends, 
to be suffering. But that is part of the life, even death. But we know that at the end, and after all, you are the one who is leading, sustaining us during this life, leading us and waiting for us because of your love. Your love that we can see in, and perceive in the death of Jesus. We pray in his name. We ask you this morning, Father, help us today. This is a time of pandemic. Help us to see you in our lives. And in this celebration this morning, to perceive the gentle guidance of your spirit, that maybe we are able to experience and feel the hope and joy that you always give to your people when we are all together. As we see the valley of death around us, we are coming before you to pray for peace around the world. We pray for people in Ukraine and for people in Russia, for our nation, for our city, for our church, Alders Gate Church, and the pastor in this congregation, and for the leaders and family members and ourselves. We pray all these joys and concerns in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jan Weller will now treat us with some special music. God sent his son, they call him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still the calm assurance this child can face on certain days because he lives. And then one day, I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and 
and oh he reigns because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because i know i know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives amen thank you jan Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 63, verses 1 through 8. O God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips when I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me. Please stand if it's comfortable for you to do so for today's gospel lesson, taken from the book of Luke, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I still find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning, everyone. And uh, you know, this is my second time here. And according to the Bible, seven is the number, the perfect number. So you have five more time to call me, okay? <laughs> Anytime. I'm there in home, so. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let us pray. Merciful God and Father, we are ready to meditate in your word this morning. Open our ears and mind and soul and help us to understand your message. To humble our, ourselves and to receive the meditation that you help us to prepare. Thank you, God, for your word that is a lamp in our feet. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> it is easy to think that we, are, we live in a kind of instant kind of life. 
We are, we are expecting that things work easy and fast as much as possible. This is our world. But sometimes, you know, things are taking a long time. As I told you about my experience in the first church, it took me two years to be able to speak a little bit of English and to, and to help people to follow what was the Lord's message for their life. Let me tell you that a spiritual growth, however, is, is taking a different way. In, a, in, a, in our religious experience, in, in everything that is concerning with the spiritual things, we had to be aware that everything changed no instantly. Even our, our life, our way to be loyal to church and to Jesus is taking some time, long time. I believe a miracle. I believe some, that someone can change his or her life instantly when you hear the voice of Jesus. But that's not uniform, you know. For everyone, it's not the same way. Some people need more time. And I think this is what it, what it is, the, the reading that we shared this morning. Do you remember in uh, 2012, uh, it was uh, um, an expedition to Mars by a, 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 a robot named Curiosity going to Mars that it took about eight months to cover millions of miles distant in between the Earth and Mars. The NASA people, the engineers, were waiting for eight months to see if we were able to, to be successful in their mission. Eight months waiting and to follow, you know, the spaceship going to that place. In our reading this morning, we found this parable that Jesus is sharing with his followers. And it was a, that kind of tree without fruit. That was not the first time or the first year that was without fruit. And then the idea in our view is a tree that is not giving fruit after more than a year, perhaps it's not a good tree. We are people that increasingly expect the world without waiting. And I remember in the same congregation, my first congregation in America, I used to be a pastor there in, in Chile. Even a, I was a superintendent for the South area in Chile. It, it, you know, but I came here like a, taking the big challenge to being able to know this culture and to learn English and to serve the same Lord and the same church. But in that first day in my congregation, someone in the door said, if you are our pastor and you speak only Spanish, and not coming back to church while you are here as a pastor. And that person and his family left the church that day. And I said, but give me at least the chance <laughs> to, to be your pastor. Well, I tell you that sometimes we make decisions because we, we want the things working instantly and we don't want to wait. I tell you that that person, after several months, without attending church, I hear that he has a very uh, strong cancer. Uh, he was, wasn't able to leave his bed. And when he, he went to the hospital, looking for medicine. I was the only pastor that was with him every week. And I know that he wasn't able to understand my prayers 
on my biblical reading the first time that I went. But he was able to understand that was praying before God and asking for him to recover. I did that till the day that he was able to leave the hospital. And the first Sunday after that, he humbled himself and he was in church. From, the, from that day till the last day in his life, he and his family was attending church. Sometimes we need a big lesson, but a big lesson is an opportunity that God is willing to give us. It's a new chance for us. And we need new chances in our life, in many ways. Since we are imperfect, and only God is perfect, many times we commit mistakes. Maybe, well, that's my case. I don't know about you, but I think we are imperfect. And we need God. If you remember last time, last Sunday, we were also in the chapter 13 in Luke. Jesus was talking about how good it was for believers and his followers to gather under his wing. The lesson that we receive with that image, how fortunate we are if we trust God and wait for, for his guidance, for his protection, and how blessed we are to have a father and our God that is willing to receive us. I learned that God is always ready to help us in growing, is always ready to help us in our path, in our daily life, in a way that we can go from perfection to perfection. But it takes time, love, and time, a lot of time in some cases. So here we are in this parable. And Jesus offering himself as the one who will take care of this tree. You know, putting new fertilizers around. And Jesus is always willing to do that with ourselves, to correct us nicely. Sometimes, but the advices that we receive from the one who is preaching, sometimes from the, the, the advice that we receive from our neighbor, from our family, from our, you know, brothers and sisters in our congregation. Sometimes by reading a good book. We cannot pretend that we have all the answers. We cannot pretend that we have all the advices that we need. Even myself to prepare a sermon is taking me several hours to read and to, you know, see another examples, another idea from jumping from one to another. And sometimes we do, certainly, Pastor, we have a collection of sermons, but we had to go back to the reading because it's something marvelous that the Bible is always telling us something new. We must wait with the golden rule in our mind if we need to wait. Whatever you wish that other would do to you, do also to them. Jesus Christ advice. We must wait also with God's goodness in mind. And lastly, 
we must wait with an end in mind, knowing that there is an end. If we are always using our chances, we have to remember that we will not wait forever as our Lord will call us sometime. God is working with us. We, 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 live, we live in, the, in a world then where there are many darkness today, many signs of death and war and destruction. We live in a world where storms sometimes sweep everything that we build per life during our entire life. Life is a gift, my brothers and sisters and can be taken away at any time. Life is not our right. None of us knows how much time we have. We are not in charge, no matter we believe that we are in charge. Our life is in God's hands. He knows. You and I have been given chances in our life and the time to repent because overall this is the message in this portion from Luke the time to repent the time to turn our life around the time to do what we know we need to do is now is today the time to say I love you is now. The time to say I'm sorry is now. The time to say I forgive you is now. The time to say I need you is now. The time to do the things you have always wanted to do is now. It's today. Who knows about tomorrow? The Bible is saying that we have only two days. Nobody knows about tomorrow. And since we are in Lenten, or Lent, we are in time defined about repentance and penitence. So it's the perfect time to change our life, to do better what we are doing, our Creator, our Father in heaven, He wants to restore the loving relationship He intended for us to share with Him. It is not too late, too late for any of us. It is a good time. There is a story that uh, someone wrote in Spain, in Madrid, a beautiful place to visit. The story is, was written for a father and his son who had a relationship that became sometimes very difficult relationship. To the time that the, this relationship was broke, finally the son ran away from home. But his father, however, began a journey in search of his rebellion son. He couldn't find him for everywhere. Finally, in Madrid, in a last desperate effort to find him, the father put an advertiser in a newspaper. The advertiser said, Dear Paco, you know Paco is a famous name in Spain, Dear Paco, meet me in front of the newspaper office at noon on Sunday. All is forgiven. I love you, your father. The next Sunday at noon, in front of the newspaper office, the story said that they were, they, there were 800 pacos. So, you know, it's, it's a funny story, but at the same time, it's, it's telling us something really powerful. 
It's talking to us that there are many times people living in brokenness without connection. And sometimes even in church, I'm not saying that in elders gay, but in other churches that I have been, people don't talk one another because relationships. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, is said the measure, message. <clears throat> Apostle Paul calls the Philippians in, in the Bible, of course, the letter to Philippians, to be filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through a life with Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Then they will demonstrate the reality of being new creatures in Christ by the fruit of the Holy Spirit in their life, which is the, the new fruit. You know what is, what is the fruit? It's in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, that is saying that the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do we need, do you need some of this? I need. Maybe a little bit, maybe a lot, like a tons. I need, I need love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Sound good, the words of Apostle Paul. Sound easy, but it's difficult. I can say even impossible for a life away from Jesus. But as we meditate in our last Sunday sermon, do you remember who was here preaching last Sunday? <clears throat> there are great benefits together under God's wing. wings. Drawing closer to Jesus, but turning away from our own transgressions and trusting him to reunite us with the Father. Our creator, our Father in heaven, he wants to restore the loving relationship he intended for us to share with him. It is not too late for any of us. But to achieve this humongous goal, it is necessary to remember Jesus Christ's call to come to him, to trust and rest, because he says, I am the wine. Excuse me. I am the vine, not the wine. This familiar one thing to with another. But he says, he said, he never said, I'm the wine. Well, actually, I think he said that in the last communion, right? When he showed the cup. <clears throat> but in this case, I'm the vine. You are the branches. If a person remains in me and I in him or her, he or she will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That is Jesus. It is not me. You know, it is Jesus who is saying how important it is to be connected with him. To be looking for him every single day. You know, we had two little one twins, boy and girl. The girl is always sleeping till we go and awake her. I awake every morning because I'm getting old. About 4.35 in the morning, I like to go and have my devotional in my corner, you know, 
or we have a corner. And, and then Pedro, my, my son, is always walking behind me. He wake early. And when he see me with the upper room and the Bible there ready for my devotional, he many times said, I want to listen. I want to be connected with you and Jesus. What a powerful, what a powerful message. The kids have many things that we don't find, but they, I think they are godly things, are the message of God. Be connected with the vine. Friends, God is giving us, like the fig tree, one more chance. Another chance to bear fruit. It is time to bear fruit of love. It is time to bear fruit of compassion. It is time to bear fruit of mission. It is time to deny our own desire and let Jesus lead our lives and our decisions. It is time to rededicate our life to Christ. It is time to begin really living for Jesus. To embrace a good cause among the several that maybe this congregation is planning. Especially for this Lent and Holy Week and Easter celebration. Maybe it's our last year. Who knows? Who knows? We may not have another chance. So, I invite you to go through this Lenten season and to celebrate with joy in your heart the resurrection of Jesus because in Him we have a Lord and a Savior, a wonderful help. A wonderful friend. So let us accept this new chance in humility, with love and hope that each day we will grow in our spiritual journey. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. <clears throat> Thank you, Reverend. Five more times now we got you, right? Please stand for our closing hymn. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus.
have been a pleasure to be again here this morning. And uh, as I said in the, in the sermon, I invite you to go through this season. That is a marvelous season. We like Christmas, you know, all that time. But this is the marvelous season during the year that we contemplate the passion of Jesus Christ, the death and resurrection. You know, it's a great time to celebrate all together. So go now. And as you have been blessed this morning, go and be a blessing for your family members, for your neighbors, for your brothers and sisters, friends. Be a blessing because this is what God is looking for. People able and willing to bless their community. And as you know, Father, we don't trust in ourselves. We trust in you. In your power, in your mercy, in your power. So give us your blessing. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Thank you.